In this lesson, we will examine some of the important problem-solving strategies we have examined in this module. We will do this by individual topic. To begin, for questions involving divisors, factors, divisibility, and multiples, one strategy is to reword the question or the given information to see if this will help you gain some insight into the solution. As you do this, don't forget that there are several different ways to say the same thing. Another important strategy to consider is finding the prime factorization of key numbers. In particular, when you encounter a number greater than 100, you should consider rewriting the number as a product of prime numbers since the solution may depend on this. Now when it comes to questions involving prime numbers, it is important that you have memorized the prime numbers up to 59 at least. On test day, you do not want to be determining whether or not 51 is a prime number. Also, when it comes to questions with prime numbers, keep in mind that every prime number is odd, with just one exception. 2 is the only prime number that is even, and there are many questions that test this fact. Next, for questions involving squares of integers, also known as perfect squares, you will find that the majority of questions are testing your knowledge of one of these two rules concerning perfect squares. When it comes to questions involving greatest common divisors, or least common multiples, the most important point to remember here is that you probably have some options. One approach is to apply the prime factorization technique and then use some logic to solve the question. Another common approach is to choose some numbers that meet the conditions defined in the question and then see what conclusions can be drawn. Now this isn't to say that these are the only approaches or that either of these approaches will always work. The important point here is that there are often two or more ways to solve a question, so you should take some time up front to identify possible approaches and then apply the one you feel will be the fastest. Now for questions that involve the greatest common divisor and the least common multiple, you should consider applying the formula that ties these two concepts together. Next, for questions that involve even and odd numbers, you must know the following rules. Also, these two extensions are tested frequently, so keep them in mind. Finally, if you encounter a question where you must determine whether an expression is even or odd, you should consider testing each possible case. When doing so, you have two options. You can use E's and O's to represent even and odd numbers, and then apply rules to evaluate each case. Or you can plug in actual even and odd numbers. Now for questions involving consecutive integers, you must know how to identify consecutive integers, since they are often disguised using variables. Also keep the following rules in mind when tackling questions with consecutive numbers. And finally, when tackling questions involving remainders, remember that you can often solve these questions using more than one approach. The two primary solution techniques are rebuilding the dividend and listing possible values of the dividend. Finally, don't forget that some remainder questions have implications that involve divisibility. For example, if a number is divisible by x, then the remainder will be 0 when that number is divided by x. Conversely, if a number is not divisible by x, then the remainder will be a number other than 0. Okay, that concludes the summary of strategies for integer property questions. Now it's time to apply them by tackling dozens of questions.